So before 2008, I had to use the patient's ribs to rebuild their jaws. And that was quite major surgery, and particularly for elderly patients that were under the knife and under general anaesthetic for about four to five hours at a time. So I sat down on the kitchen table one day and started doing a few drawings. And eventually I got to the concept of, hey, I've got this nice streamlined joint that I think would work. And that's where it stopped. And I thought, well, I can't take it any further because I'm a surgeon, I'm not an engineer, I'm not a designer. And I thought I'd come to the University of Melbourne. And asked us if we were interested in developing a prosthetic jaw joint replacement. It really was a very close collaboration from the very beginning. Uh, as engineers, we have expertise in using software and computational modelling tools. There was a lot of engineering research that went into it to perfect it, to modify it, to make it a particular joint that would work comfortably in patients and also be able to take the loads. Initially, when we developed our prosthesis, we 3D printed it in plastic and we had it uh, placed in a cadaver for biomechanical testing. More recently, with the advent of 3D printing in titanium, we've actually been able to fabricate uh, biocompatible implants and place them in cadavers and inside a human patients. Whilst I was thinking about my very first patient that I was going to put it on, he walked through the door and he had exactly the type of deformity, which was rare, that he needed not just a prosthetic joint, but he also needed his whole face reconstructed. An x-ray uh, last year discovered that I didn't have a condyle sitting into my socket. So the top of the jawbone was just sort of resting on the, the joint um, socket. What was painful was on the opposite side, all my muscles were like straining and were shortening. So um, yeah, eating, chewing, if I was really stressed at work for a long period of time, it would just, I would just get so much pain on this side. I was really nervous before the operation. It's, it's a serious operation, like it was pretty, there was a lot of anxiety leading up to it. It was really good to know that the jaw was developed, you know, just across the river at Melbourne Uni and then printed out down in Port Melbourne and then put into me over at Epworth, like it kind of, <laughs> it's this real Melbourne kind of team. Uh, huge benefits in fabricating implants using 3D printing technology, not just because the design can be tailored to a patient's anatomy, but incredible cost savings. We can fabricate our implant for less than $500. Now we know it's been placed in three patients and with many more patients queuing up to have this surgical procedure and there's also a tremendous export potential. We're creating a centre of excellence at St Vincent's Hospital, part of the University of Melbourne, and from that we're hoping it'll mushroom into a wider market as more and more people are trained to use the Melbourne prosthesis.